This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 714 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ready to talk professional wrestling with you. Hey, it's still happening. It's still happening. This is where we talk about wrestling and attempted homicide for your entertainment. We got a whole crew with us tonight. Uh, first of all, from Beacon, New York. He's the only Mayhemmer with a future endeavor letter from the WWE and probably... Uh, the coolest Lego collection of any of us, but many are are starting to catch up on this show. Mad Mike is with us. You gotta be joking me! <laughs> I had to do one more. I had to do one you, more. You still got. You, I mean, it's still. I mean, we can still. I'm, re- I'm representing. I'm representing the mom now, but mm-hmm. I, I had to do. I had to do one more iconic. One more. I we did a lot last night. You you put out a new move. You have a new TikTok that's been going yep. around. I did the- Posed at least three times. At least three times. Uh, so I need to double check on the tech talk and see if that's been taken off yet. Um, so, so, so I mean, the iconic bandwagon is very strong right now. Uh, I do so. have something else I want to talk about later with the iconics. Okay, because... we'll get around to it. We'll get around to it. Also with us back on the host of the hottest new podcast on Sorgatron Media, uh, uh, Listen to Your Parents, uh, Mainstream Matt Carlin's. Thank you very much, Sorg. Uh, uh, Mad Mike has a TikTok. No, no, no. I, I have a TikTok, and I put you his have dance a TikTok. on the TikTok to the oh. Iconics. Mu- I, I messed up. I think when I posted, I didn't bring the Iconics music over with it, so I so it's a little confusing on Instagram right now. Other than just Mad Mike is doing the pose, and that's okay. <laughs> so, okay. Cool. Cool. Um, I didn't know I was uh, being have my having my likeness rights used on TikTok. Well, so, you know, I, I mean. My lawyers will be in contact with you. Well, send them to China. <laughs> China knows. Uh, also with us is the unwilting Rose, Tatiana Rose, back on the show again. First time remotely, I believe. How you doing? I'm, uh, ah, I'm doing okay today. <laughs> Everything is just fine. <laughs> Everything is doing great. It's fine. I got wrestling t-shirts in the mail, so I'm yes. a little happy. Yes. Fantastic. We're ready for the merch. Ready for the merch. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually wearing uh, my newest Matt Connor t-shirt today. Woo! Nice. Nice support. Yeah. Support the support support the real Reaper, Matt Connor, yeah. please. Uh, we were actually talking about it a little bit on Indie Mayhem show. Uh, Zach Rain was talking about that and the 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 revolt issue now with the uh, the former revival. So it, it oh, never ends. It never ends. So it's just it's just the Disney problem that I don't think anybody expected to translate over into wrestling mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. the whole reason that Disney keeps making the movies they do and taking from the stories they take is so that they can have those movies and nobody else can do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we all make fun of that. We all joke about it and talk about how uh, Disney basically created trademark. But I don't think anybody expected for that problem to translate over into this business because, yeah. you know, wrestling's so fluid and everything's been done before. Like I, I'm probably not the first person to call myself the unwilting rose, but everything gets recycled. Everything gets done over and given a new twist. And so trademarks have never been something that have s- stuck or really been thought about. So mm-hmm. that this happened at all, is just kind of like, Jesus. And now and now twice now between the Reaper and uh and the Revolt. So it, anyways, we'll get into the rest of that wrestling talk and, and and such. So um we are of course live right now. You can check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. I see some very uh interesting people in the chat rooms uh, uh going on out there. What's up, El Paso? What's up, Rob? What's up, Podner? What's up, Kayla? 
Uh, what's up, Crosshairs Kelly hanging out over in one of the watch watch groups right now. Uh, so uh, we got oh, a hell cool. of a crew here tonight, and we're going to be talking to have a lot of fun. We I hope the vibe the vibe the vibe we started last night. I, I don't know. It's just after a good it's like it's the good pay per view vibe after a drought. And I think I think all of us are energized. But anyways, you can check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Drop us a line to that email address. <laughs> good times at wrestling mayhem show dot com or that phone number that you completely replace your ex's phone number with in your phone 412-206-WMS0 hashtag call us when you're drunk tweet us at mayhem show tweet us when you're drunk uh and also follow the facebook page and group and of course we are live here every tuesday at 9 p.m eastern here on the facebook live plus over on the youtube the periscope and the sorgatron media twitch and we do have all those chat rooms open but the main one that's happening is over in the facebook live of course uh where the 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 the, the mayhem mass has gathered over there typically so please join us over there for the conversation but of course you can check us on your favorite podcast catcher uh whether that be apple google stitcher spreaker iheart radio we're on all of them that we can think of if we're not let us know hit us up on one of those things and we'll make sure we're out there please if you're like if you're seeing us live or if you're seeing us later please hit the like button hit the favorite button hit the share button right now tell the people that mayhem is happening and get them in on the mayhem universe um also thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show our good friends still supporting the show at the fan of the show level uh Bo Diggity! Woo! <laughs> There's a voice I wasn't expecting. <laughs> uh, Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, and Team Hamifist, our friends at the Poppy Club, Bradley Brothers, Dave Ponder, Daniel Towery, and Tina Keys, uh, our friends at the Pizza Club level, Doc Remedy, and Kyle Turner, and our friends at the manager level, OccupyProWrestling.com, and Farnsworth Investments. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show we've had like the biggest year of patreon so far and and other than mike not seeing a lot of that going away <laughs> uh but uh yeah, it, it, we do course. appreciate it, especially with I everything going on very, i pay for very specific <laughs> service <laughs> it's like i paid for a very specific thing and i even though i wasn't happy with a thing this I year didn't it, I didn't... but damn it i my money was still going to a worthwhile cost. that's right there you go there you go to, to, welcome to the mayhem charity group <laughs> uh, anyways um <laughs> no fun, man. uh some comments about ooh, tweeting when drunk not a good idea anyways but you guys tweeting when drunk is a great idea <laughs> you guys can support the show too at wrestling mayhem show i'm sorry patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show links are over at wrestling mayhem show dot com okay so it has been a week uh we we talked about a lot last night between mostly raw um money in the bank and i don't think we, we didn't get deep into the money in the bank and to be fair neither did they neither, <laughs> yeah it was a very shallow show uh for the <laughs> most part <laughs> when our truth versus mvp is a booked match on your show mm-hmm you know it's a little light in the undercard. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is that a little light? I mean, it just happened. There was no build for it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, we're... Uh, okay. I, I don't even... I mean, Brendan Vink has had more forward momentum on Raw than R-Truth has. Mm. Yeah, well, he's he's got a bigger mountain to climb that has a lot of runway there. Um. Anyways, so we... But the, I, I don't even, like, for the most part, I'm not even thinking about the undercard on this thing. We The Money in the Bank match was a spectacle. It was, I, I made a tweet yesterday from, from a comment last night because literally the greatest thing is wrestling made me smile this week. And it happened both on Sunday and Monday. And, uh, and that, 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 that has me excited for things, of course. Uh, the, the, simplest, the simplest things get me excited for this. Um, we talked about a lot on the watch party, so I want to actually start with Tatiana on your thoughts on on this uh, um, different Money in the Bank situation this year. I had a lot of fun watching clips from it. Uh, I once again do not have the WWE Network, so I was not able to watch the show. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I was following it every now and then. You saw enough of it. They, they put. Uh, they put. A, I think they it, put a lot of the big highlights out there, so you got the idea. My favorite highlight was. And I, I don't know what the context is. I don't know how this happened. I'm assuming that they were... I can only assume from an outsider's perspective that the matches were happening somewhat simultaneously, either mm -hmm. or like one right after the other. 
My favorite highlight was watching Shayna Baszler put Rey Mysterio in a chokehold. Yeah. I laughed so hard when I saw that, and I had no context. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, Shayna's got Ray. So they literally did start start at the same time. Mm-hmm. Okay, and different locations. Yes, they started, they started in different locations. The women were in the lobby, okay. and the men were in the gym. Yes, that gym from the Ico Pro commercials and the Stone Cold. Uh, which I'm sorry, no one said I hate Austin, which was very upsetting to me. Yes, yes, no one said that. They should have said it. <laughs> I think they're all either respect or fear him too much. I I do I do think it's also kind of weird and I know this isn't on purpose because you can't start with all 12 people in the lobby. I understand that this is the premise of a joke, but the men started higher on the corporate ladder than the women. Just saying. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, still just life and uh <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Here's here's all I have to say about that. The winner of the men's Money in the Bank match did not get nearly as much recognition as the women's Money in the Bank ladder match winner. So, mm-hmm. and also, the, Oscar prevented Baron Corbin from winning, which is just a win for everyone. That's that was beautiful, <laughs> especially since Baron Corbin committed murder. Twice. What was the man? I, I just, I just remember I logged onto Twitter to you know check on how things were going, and just everybody's going. Did Corbin just murder two people? Did mm-hmm. Corbin just murder two people? And I'm like, oh my god, did Corbin just murder two people? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, rest in peace, Dalster Black and Rey Mysterio. <laughs> we miss you. Mm-hmm. We miss you dearly. We miss you. Thanks for showing up on Raw. As go. <laughs> Oh yes. Copyright. Uh, but uh, copyright being the elite entertainment. <laughs> I have to say the best part of the weekend was Alistair Black tweeting right after the pay-per-view just a picture of a ghost. <laughs> just I a picture of a ghost. That. I I was, was just scrubbing was through just... Twitter. I was just scrubbing through Twitter at like midnight and that came on my feed and I legitimately snort laughed. I'm like it was so aesthetically in tune with him too, because mm-hmm. it wasn't just a ghost; it was like a ghost in a smoky room and not yeah. surrounded by blackness. And it's like, oh my god, that's and, that's definitely the ghost of Alistair Black. And it was the Charlie Brown, like I got a rock, like yes, like, that's what it was too. It was just mm. it was perfect. I'm like, but, if you're that witty, I see what Zelina sees in you, sir. <laughs> I, I, I mean, clicked. he also he also agreed to have six cats. Ooh. Like, Ooh. I mean, I couldn't. They have it. six cats. I couldn't which, do it. There's the I, there's the tweet. I, on, if you guys are on video, there's the tweet in question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was it, it was just absolutely perfect. Absolutely I love perfect. it. I love it. But I, but it's fun. So, like wrestling is fun again, and this is what it like. Like we don't have to be serious all the time. We had some great matches uh, beforehand, especially that 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 WWE Championship match. Where I think it was great. Um, but then we could just have fun and kind of laugh at the absurdity of it all for a while, you know, and, one, and, 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 and they're, they're really good when they do that. Well, one thing I'm surprised nobody's talking about is when Dana Brooke won fake one. Why didn't she just look at that briefcase and go, Oh, and just leave that briefcase. She grabbed was full of money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would have taken that and gone like, Oh, I don't saw the contract. Uh, I'm going to go put this in my savings. Bye. Uh, Dana Brooke had low key the best performance in that whole match because it wasn't (sighs) just grabbing the wrong briefcase. It was also her recovering from that and running into the food fight room while still wearing the poster of Carmella around her shoulder. That was so funny. I, 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 I want, I wanted to grab Dana and just hug her and be like, "Thank you for understanding comedy. Thank you. I love. Thank, thank you for the through line that you took us on with that joke. That whole that match was just so fun to watch, mostly on the women's side, especially like when Oscar jumped from the balcony, which was beautiful." Jumped into the elevator and just that moment of them all going, "Shit, the elevator's gone!" And then stairs. 
<laughs> Oscar dancing in the elevator was everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the use of, of of elevator cameras were was just spot on in most of this. But that's been a good idea since uh, Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett back, and I think it was 2011, maybe 10. And mm-hmm. they had they it wasn't a mat. Oh no, no wait, yeah, it was a match. It was a false count anywhere match, and Barrett and Orton, uh, you know fight spilled out into the arena they got into an elevator started brawling and then they made their way into a stairwell and that's when we had the spot of oh randy orton just fell down the stairs and probably broke something (laughs) hey hey wade you might want to run from from the news from the chat uh we got uh uh partner says ray getting sandwiched between otis and naya um, mm-hmm. the, the, the Paul Heyman, uh, interlude there, which, which by the way, sponsored by put a pickle on that. Uh, well, check it out on YouTube and Chachi says on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it, 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 you love a good food fight. And I didn't imagine that we'd have one in the main event of a pay-per-view, uh, in, in that one, but good. Man, it was just a lot of fun. It was. It was, it was a good time. Uh, Matt, you, Mason mania, of course, runs wild every day. It's like Christmas. Hold it in your heart every day. I mean, it tries to run wild every day, but it, because I'm his father, sometimes I have to tell him, though, today it cannot run wild. It must it must cease running. It must at least walk today. Yeah. So yeah, have you ever run wild every day. Mason Mania? Is that what you're saying? No, I just you gotta kind of govern it a little bit. Ready? Kill it with you a dose a, a dose of poison. Whoa, I mean, whoa. I mean, he'd be running like eight match cards plus a Royal Rumble at the beginning and the end of the card if I let him every oh single Oh my God, day. he sounds like, like an indie booker. It, 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 <laughs> he's, he's, he's big on the Battle Royals and the, uh, and the Royal Rumbles, and he will, do, and he, he, will, he, he will do the tag team Battle Royal, like whatever feels right. Hey, you know, he wants everyone to get a paycheck. That, that's commendable. <laughs> yeah. Everyone yeah, gets money. Yeah. money, brother. Well, well, I I see that that money in the bank already influenced him. As I saw these pictures, and I will describe these for you guys on audio and 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 you mm-hmm. guys on visual. When I I saw this image of two Hello Fresh boxes taped together and stacked together, and the uh, uh, WWE ring on top of it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and yes. Obvious. And I, I, oh my goodness. I tell you what, I, I love, I, sorry, I talk about this all the time, like when you're playing with your kid and you have your cell phone within reach and you could see like, you know, Aleister Black <laughs> is climbing like the bed railing above where the b- briefcase is hanging. And you're like, I'm getting my phone. Just hold on a second. Mason. I just got to get this real quick. So, Aleister Black go. falls off and lands on the ramp. <laughs> he does. It, it, it's the, the Rey Mysterio falling off the ledge and just like, Landing headfirst on the entrance ramp, you know, two Hello Fresh boxes down. You know, there was no secondary roof on our <laughs> match. There was oh no! no. Oh, headfirst on the ramp. Yeah. That's so. I mean, this is. That, I love that, it. That's Lucha Underground. That's Lucha Underground. Right yeah, there. yeah, it's very oh, Lucha Underground. Usually, usually, I, I, I kind of let. I, I try not to get involved, you know, because you know we as adults have. You know, we just shouldn't get invo- too involved when our kids are playing. But even I couldn't resist. Like, you could see, like, the one clip where, like, my hand reaches out and I push the ladder over because I couldn't resist. Like, I wanted to see, like, the ladder tip. Guy at the top of the ladder, almost to the briefcase, ladder tipped over, off the side of the building, gone. You know, that's, you know, real mm-hmm. action for your action. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it was so- fun. He wants to do another one, except he wants to take it outside. He wants to go into, like, the back driveway. And he wants to do it like under the under, you know, maybe he'll wait until there's cover of darkness, too. Maybe we'll just, you know, put the lights on over and everything. spotlight it. (laughs) (laughs) We we could have an outdoor under the lights Mason Mania match. I know you're thinking about that. I know you're saying, I love he's like, you're talking about me. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. Yes. I I love how he's wearing (laughs) headphones like Paul Heyman in the old ECW days. Yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, back to so nice. hey, he's going to produce. This is life. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, to do. he's. I, I mean, I, and I don't. I don't want to. Um, I, I don't want to. You know, underplay the, the 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 majesty of the uh, you know, the home game basically of the money in the bank 
you know, ladder match on top of a building. But, you know, Sorg, our main event was awesome, too. I don't know if you saw the picture from the main event. Um, this, because, so, uh, wait, wait, the match on top of a building wasn't the main event? It wasn't the main event. We had we had a world title match. What, was it a, a regular world title match? match between Adam Cole and Brock Lesnar? Uh, I don't know if you how how up to speed on the Mason Mania you are you are, but the, there was a storyline where Brock won a match and got to go on a cruise for a month. Wait, okay, Brock wait. makes this, we we found a toy <laughs> boat. Brock Lesnar entered on the boat for the main event match. He's like sails in on the boat. Is Braun Strowman yeah. driving? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got a stable with Braun Strowman and Keith okay. Lee. It, it's it's amazing, and uh, yeah, he wins. He gets back on the boat. The boat sails away. It's just <laughs> so. What is this? So, this somebody's like Brock normal booking. It is Brock normal <laughs> booking, except there was a boat involved, a physical boat sailing. Well, I mean, here's the, the thing: arena. do we do we know for sure that there isn't usually a boat? I mean, what's that, huh? Said, are we for sure that there isn't usually a boat involved with Brock disappearing for months at a time? <laughs> maybe, I mean, maybe I that know. maybe that's the secret. Maybe that's why. Maybe he's out there. Just Defending the WWE universe from pirates. <laughs> Maybe oh. that's what's been going on. Oh, these are good ideas. Oh, <laughs> that's why Paul Birchall has oh, been back. Not. I want that fan fiction. That's, um, that's a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's crazy. Like, yeah. Oh my god, I've turned Brock Lesnar into a hero. No. <laughs> it, it depends on your views of pirates. Wow. I okay, so I, I can't say much because my ancestor is a pirate, but you know. This, Sir is, Francis this Drake. is news. Yeah, I am a descendant of Sir Francis Drake somewhere way back in the lineage because he didn't have any kids. So I'm technically related to one of his relatives. It's somewhere. Wow. Well, I okay. Have, I just found the Wikipedia page. Yeah. And like, now yeah. It's he, had, <laughs> he had a whole four game series based off of him because mm. the Uncharted game started finding the tomb of Sir Francis Drake. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> and, yeah. So I found basically, that out. basically, you're a character in Uncharted. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and pulling that together. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I really right. hope you haven't told this to the promoter that actually has pirates on the roster in West Virginia. <laughs> are you watching Rick? Go. Are you watching so, Rick? I gotta so go. Your sh- so your ship is called the Unwilting Rose now, right? <gasps> Damn Ooh. it! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Man, you know, if you need a reboot, like pirate pirate lady gimmick, I don't think has happened to any just, great effect just, in pro just wrestling. Team with her, just team with Dash and Dawson and be F T R R. Yes. I brought it all the way around. Mm-hmm. I brought it all the way around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all the way around and then some. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In, out. All okay. Right. All right. I got to go. <laughs> we, we're we're going we're gonna to give everybody a, a, a chance to, to sit on that for a moment uh, and come up with your own pirate-themed ideas. Uh, but in the meantime... <laughs> You can see uh, the Tatiana Rose in action uh, over at IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network, uh, including over at Black Diamond Wrestling, and, of course, on VOD, some other promotions. Look it up. Uh, but uh, a lot of action over there, a lot of stuff. Hey, you know, there's not a lot going on. Uh, there's actually more going on, that, surprisingly. Uh, stay tuned for some announcements. Uh, but, uh, uh, it, you know, but in the meantime, it's a great time to catch up on Indie Wrestling. Of course, we got the uh, great 24-hour Twitch and Periscope feed, so you can just dip your toes into what's going on and catch up on a little. We have also our friends over at Grind City TV on Roku uh, are carrying some uh, special uh, weekly matches Wednesday nights at 11 p.m. But you can also pick up a lot of great stuff, including from the Heartland, a great collection uh, of, of Heartland Wrestling uh, from around the, uh, I guess, Southern Ohio, Kentucky, uh, all over area there. Uh, seeing a lot of great faces. Don, John Cena's featured on there. Uh, he, um, uh, I think Eddie Guerrero's in there. Charlie Haas is a part of that. Uh, 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 Jamie Noble, uh, Brian Kendrick, a lot of great WWE names uh, a part of that. Um, and, of course, put together and with new commentary, uh, of course, by... Um, 
uh, Les Thatcher and Joe Dombrowski. Go check it out on VOD over there at IndieWrestling.us and uh, all the other great titles going on there. A lot of great stuff going on. Speaking of indie wrestling, I learned that I learned I learned that uh, there's there's something about washing a belt with a with ketchup. What was this? <laughs> Is she muted? Is she muted? No, I'm not muted. Is that is that a way okay. to, to to clean your belts? I listen. I don't. I've never yes. had a championship okay. belt. Okay. So, all right. First off, I I want to say loud and clearly, this was not originally my idea. Okay. This this is not some thought. I just thought, oh, I'll just do this. No, this this was an idea suggested to me, uh, and then demonstrated by another person that it was also suggested to. So this is not technically my fault. You vetted Second, this. it is you in fact vetted a... this. <laughs> Listen, two guys at IWC made me think it was a good idea. It's not my fault. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Anywho, um, it is secondly, it is a scientific fact that ketchup does in fact shine up certain metals. Okay. That's not that's not like some random thing that somebody came up with out of their bomb. That's there's chemicals in ketchup that it's like the acidic properties of the tomatoes and other spices that go into it that take away uh it, a lot of crap from certain metals, but it's only certain metals. Mm -hmm. Other metals it can damage it can cause it to erode a little bit and actually lose some shine my belt is neither of those so the ketchup <laughs> did nothing it did absolutely nothing it didn't make it any shinier and it didn't damage it which okay. is a good thing okay at least we didn't go the but, other way yeah nothing nothing happened to it it just smells vaguely of tomatoes now <laughs> so it's like if your belt got sprayed by a skunk <laughs> And you're trying to correct it. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, Wait, are you going to tell me that every time you come by uh, my camera position with your belt, I'm going to just vaguely have a craving for pizza? Eventually, the smell is going to wear off. So maybe the first time. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. It, again, I did say it vaguely smells of tomatoes. But okay. Okay. So. <laughs> don't, uh, don't leave it in a hot car anytime soon. Oh no! Oh, it's yeah. it's actually sitting right behind me. There it is. Ah, hey! Always have your championships and webcam reach. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's fine. It's actually the smell is actually gone, uh, which is good. Okay. But yeah, uh, I've just been um. Anybody that's been following the videos I've been putting out, I've just been losing my mind mm -hmm. and just trying to keep busy to. Well, some would say to very little effect, but you know, uh, I thought, screw it. I, I'm going to try that whole clean your metal item with ketchup ordeal. And clearly that didn't work out in my favor. I, you know, while, while that may not have been an accomplishment, I was, um, I was over the moon that you got Zeke Mercer to talk on camera. Well, I have gotten so many compliments about that. <laughs> 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 so many people have been like Z kind of promo and I'm like thanks guys there are promoters out there that have been waiting on a promo hypothetically I'm sure uh, for the past like since we all got locked down and then saw that <laughs> yeah it was that was a fun little video to put out mm -hmm. but I am I am very curious as to how he got my phone number I don't think I've actually gotten that answer yet mm. and that also leads me to ask who else has it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who else Ooh, has that number. That's never a good question to ask. Who has her number, but unfortunately it's labeled as Mayhem Show Hotline? I don't know. I, I don't I just... know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That would be. No offense. That, that would just be a terrible day. It's like, is this the Mayhem, Ra is this the mayhem Show Hotline? Well, considering no. we've, been, we've been telling everybody to call when they're drunk for like the last five years at least. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, even longer than that, because I used to actually call when I was drunk. So you did, you did, you did. I did several times. Yes. Oh my it god! Was it was usually at four in the morning. So. It, it's it's drunk you, big freaky Daniel Tiger, and the Miz that one time. So mm -hmm. that's pretty much that's our hotline history. So, the yeah. Miz? 
Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a, a, yeah. a man. Mike happened to uh, meet him at a big Apple con. And I, I, he, no, no, oh. I, went, no, I went to San Diego comic con. Oh, that was San Diego. <laughs> I went to San Diego comic con. I waited online for about an hour and a half and I had to time this just right. <laughs> so I, I had had my phone in my hand and I was like, Okay, second I get up there, I'll get the autograph and then I'll see if he'll leave a message. Mm-hmm. So I dialed. I was like, "Hey, um, sorry, my buddy Mike really wanted to come to this. Is there a way you could like just you know tell him what he's missing?" And he's like, "Sure, no problem." He grabbed my phone. He cut a promo into the phone, and then the picture, of, like the video of it, was on dot com. Oh my oh, god! Oh really? I, wait, I, did I know about this? I, yeah. Oh yeah, because okay. I took a screen cap from it. Nice. I took a screen cap from it when I saw it on when I saw it on Raw. I'm like, that's my phone. <laughs> Look, this is using my phone. <laughs> wait, it wasn't that. you. It was just your phone and him talking into it. It was just my phone. <laughs> I was not. I was not on the video. <laughs> oh my I god! Found wow. out, like, like once I once I got a job there, I found out who actually found that clip. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> I told them that that was my phone. They're like, "That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic." I I kind of had a similar. Ex- I actually had a very similar experience. I got a baseball player to talk shit to my brother. Nice. <laughs> same s- same deal. I was at Pirate Fest, and they had a booth set up where you could go and meet a player, and you know they would somebody would dial the phone, and they would call and talk to a relative. Or anybody that you wanted them to talk to. Mm-hmm. And we met Jared Hughes. And uh, Jared Hughes, I'm not going to get into too much detail because I don't want to reveal too much about my non Tatiana life that may or may not exist. Uh, <laughs> what a tease. Jared, hey, not <laughs> Are you a, I have a secret? I have a secret life. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, hashtag, I met hashtag Jared. ghost Tantiana. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> ha- hashtag don't call me. <laughs> hashtag pirate ghost. <laughs> hashtag so smells many- like ketchup still. <laughs> <laughs> so many things I'm not going to live down from this one. Um, I had met Jared Hughes so many times that he kind of knew who I was because mm. the pirates weren't. This was right before the pirates had that beautiful 2013 season. So it was a lot easier to get recognized by a player back then when you were a fan. So Hughes sees me. He's like, Hey, it's you. It's you again. How are you doing? How's this going? How's that going? Talk to him a little bit. And I'm like, Hey, listen, my brother is a nationals fan. Cause my brother used to work for the nationals and he still loves them for some reason. And I, I just, I think it'd be really funny if you uh, gave him a buzz and he was like, he's a nationals fan. Okay. Okay. And uh, he and my brother talked smack to each other for a good 10 minutes. It was amazing <laughs> to watch. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, the, the, the closest to that I've gotten is I took a picture with Dan Marino when uh, him and Bruno, and this is actually props to, to Matt Carlins for, for uh, giving me the lead on it. Uh, I got a picture with him and I sent it to my wife and her family because they're all Bills fans. Nice. And uh, the Dolphins, of course, were not nice to the Bills in the Super Bowl. Uh, so neither, neither were the Cowboys. Neither were the neither Cowboys, were, of course. I'm sorry, Troy were, Aikman doesn't hang around Pittsburgh that often. But <laughs> so, oh man, um, great stuff. Hey, I want to get, I want to get, keep moving. We got a lot of stuff to get to in the second half here. But in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to our friends supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, we we actually had a fun um, uh, delivery scheme tonight since everybody was relatively local on the awesome cast. Uh, a, since I know nobody's been in the studio for a while, hopefully that changes uh, uh, relatively soon that we'll be allowed to do that. We're working on what what we can do after Friday. Things are changing here in Pennsylvania, at least this part of Pennsylvania. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, these guys have been supporting us for a good long time. I'm so happy that people have been supporting them through these tough times uh, when you can't go in. They still deliver. They still take out. They're still not coming to Seattle. I'm sorry, Tina. But we were actually working with something that might help, actually, that we connected on Twitter tonight. Here's hoping. Um, but anyways, please uh, uh, go go give them a shout-out. Even if you're not in, in, in the area, let them know. Man, I wish Slice was in my town. And you never know 
how that global expansion can go because they already have went from one to four locations since we've been chatting about them. So please go check them out. Our good friends at SliceOnBroadway.com. All right, we'll be back with more with Tatiana Rose. And uh, we are going to be talking about our homework assignment from Jake and Ed- Jacob Edwin. And you'll find out what the one for next week is as well coming up after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. This is the Aaron Sheik. You listen to the Mayhem Show. Iran, number one. Russia, number one. USA, ah, top. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We are back. Of course, Mad Mike with us. Uh, Matt Carlins and Tatiana Rose, the Black Diamond Women's Champion. And there was a comment in the chat room over the break uh, from Bobby. It says to ask Tatiana if she called the ketchup belt bath the Heinz Shine. <laughs> and active baseball. I was going to say, that sounds that, like a finisher first, to me. That sounds like a finisher. Maybe the first audible face palm I've heard. Yes. That's a, <laughs> you make noise with that. everything. That's what they teach you, right? Yes, uh, and it also helps that there's a microphone next to my face. So, <laughs> well, anyways, a big week, a big announcements, not from us, uh, but in wrestling, uh, and including a Becky Lynch uh, announcing Mama Becky uh, uh, going to be a mother. Uh, congr- congratulations there, and of course, to to fit with that, Mad Mike has our big question for this week. All right. Well, also, uh, I was going to ask this last week, but completely forgot about it. Since it was fitting that Sunday was Mother's Day and with Becky Lynch's announcement, the big question this week is, who is your favorite mother in wrestling? Interesting. (gasps) These pants have pockets. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> no no it's okay it's okay we understand pants of pockets are a very big deal i'm, I'm sorry i literally just noticed that my hand just disappeared into my mm. you understand it's I, been it's been, <laughs> eight, it's been eight weeks i we understand it's been eight weeks since you've seen human persons uh <laughs> It's a they're human people, sort of. I mean, in person and not like through a screen that you maybe wait, still question wait, you if they're mean, real people have, or part of the matrix. I can have conversations with people in person that aren't Lego characters. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you we lied can... to me, Mickey in a Hulkbuster. <laughs> Anyways, favorite moms in wrestling. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say Don Marie, but that's by marriage. Uh, <laughs> hey, it counts. It counts. Stepmoms are moms too, Sorg. What? Stepmoms are moms too. Oh, I just said dead moms. That got really weird. Uh, so, <laughs> that's also true, but. Uh, yeah, yes. No, stepmoms become moms together. Mm. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, let's not go deep down that rabbit hole, I guess. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, uh, Matt, do you have a favorite mom in wrestling? Yes, Sorg, I do. I just one one just came to mind. Uh, but I will uh, I will nominate because it is a little bit of a tough question. I would nominate Helen Hart for uh, putting up with all of the jokes from uh, the King over the years yes. and being a relatively good sport about it. Um, I can't mm. think of who, um, but perhaps Helen wished death upon him too. So uh, <laughs> there you go. I mean, she wouldn't be the only one to wish death upon the king. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um. I. I. I, I go ahead. Sorry, I. I have a mom. Mm-hmm. Um. One of probably my favorite mom in wrestling, Mama Benjamin. <gasps> yes. I. <gasps> I loved that gimmick. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn! Yeah. Much. Yeah. I mm-hmm. wish that gimmick lasted for eight years. <laughs> I lo- because it, it's this is a rare thing that WWE did. Like normally, when they would bring in someone as a mom, it would just be another wrestler or someone who's in the wrestling business. Mm-hmm. Thea Vidal is an actor. She was like on TGIF shows. Like she knows her shit. So when they brought her on. 
to be Shelton Benjamin's mother. Like, it was an actual actor, like, that didn't, as far as I know, did not know the wrestling business, Mm -hmm. but just played the part of an overbearing mother to Shelton Benjamin, who occasionally hit on the big show. And it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. If you if you've never experienced Mama Benjamin, just as soon as this podcast is over, go to your WWE network, type in Mama Benjamin, and enjoy the rest of your evenings and in, in activities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's great. Look, didn't didn't that culminate with a dancing mamas at WrestleMania? Uh, no. Or is no. that my fever that dream? Brodus, that was Brodus Clay. Really. Oh god! Oh, we got another dancing gif. There we go. Mark that. Um, <laughs> wow, wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tatiana, do you have a favorite mom in wrestling? I do. Uh, my favorite would have to be Mickey James. Yes. Mickey James has always been one of my biggest influences in wrestling. So. Obviously, she's a mom now. She has been for quite some time. She's my favorite mom. And she survived getting thrown in front of the Hogwarts Express. What? And also, no. one of my favorite things about Mickey in this her latest run in WWE, uh, especially when she was um, being like the second for Alexa Bliss, she would always come out in these like ridiculously high heels. And then just proceed to kick ass while in the high heels. It was amazing. She was mm-hmm. a better that, wrestler in like 10 inch heels than most regular people are in just like normal shoes. So mm-hmm. uh, usually as, as an, uh, Mickey James is a very short person mm-hmm. and as a very, as a very short person myself, sometimes you just gotta learn how to use heels when you got them. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could do that in heels that high though. Like that's that length of heels. This is a total Mickey James thing, but had but, to get inspiration from somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, Tatiana, back in Impact, James Storm threw Mickey James in front of a train. That that was a thing that happened, and Mickey James just came back within like two weeks or so because mm-hmm. she's a badass. Yep. You know, I do remember when she was announcing her pregnancy on Impact. Or no, no, wait. She wasn't announcing her pregnancy. She'd already had the baby by that point. She was uh, just saying, hey, guys, uh, I tried to do both, but I've decided that I need to go and be a mom. And James Storm came out and was like, oh, come on, Mickey, let's have one more, man. Hey, you guys remember when James Storm was in NXT? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you remember when that happened and we had beer money in NXT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the possibilities. And it didn't put them together. No. And then, and then it he didn't went put back, them together. And he went back and I said, sorry about your yeah. damn voices. <laughs> uh, from, <laughs> from the chat room, Tina. Sorg, who's your favorite? T- 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 my favorite? Uh, we'll, 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 we'll back to that. Uh, Tina shares, first of all, uh, the OG Priest 2016 Linda McMahon. No, Sorg, Sorg. Let's let's read the whole comment. Okay, Judy okay. Bag- Judy Bagwell, just kidding. <laughs> the Brodus Mom Squad, just kidding. Then she said the OG pre 2016 Linda McMahon. She did really set us up for that, didn't she? Um, mm-hmm. Eve Torres uh, is a great wrestling mom, especially with her oh. self-defense courses. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, I said, excuse me. Oh, Vicky Guerrero from Podner. Good choice. Even though that's Vicky so is persona non grata to WWE now, yeah, that's right. She did something. I still haven't watched that I, match with Jay and Silent Bob yet. Uh, yeah, she she is the uh, first winner of the um, uh, was it oh the, the Manitoba Montreal? Melee. Manitoba Melee. I knew it was in yeah. Montreal. I'm like it's another Canadian M city. Uh, so 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 my favorite parents right now. Can I say? Uh, which includes the mom, mm. right? Okay, we're doing. Oh, the and, uh, Garza also says the best mom is Sweet Soraya Knight, the only mom to kick her daughter's ass. Oh. And, and I say, give it time. And flipped <laughs> off our friend Toddy from the Thrifty Podcast when they did Blackcraft here. That was a fun <laughs> moment. <laughs> Bobby says, "Ah, uh, um, yes, the show that shall never be named." <laughs> Oh, it's been I named think, several uh, times. Um, I think yeah. Bobby also uh, mentioned uh, another mom, Men on a Mission. Yes. That might have been uh, a strike oh. on the uh, by the way, definition of 
we're looking for. I got a shout out. We were doing a stream. Was it? I think we were doing the Fight Underground stream on Wednesday, and somebody said that Oscar from Men on a Mission was watching in the stream. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad Oscar's still out there doing, and doing something. So there's some, yeah, well, there's some footage of Oscar in uh, on the Prime Wrestling stuff. I, I think it's on the <laughs> network. Actually, no, it is because on the Superstars uh, uh, disc we for, for Prime Cuts, uh, men on, he he wrapped somebody to the ring at Prime Wrestling up at the Nautica stage in Cleveland. Um, like I don't know, some six years ago or so. So yeah, he's doing something. Um, there, there was a period in my life where I knew the entire WrestleMania rap. <laughs> Now the only thing I can remember is that he arrived. He rhymed "days" and "alundra blaze." Yes, the only yes. part of it I can remember that works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although honestly, call Oscar back. Have him write raps for every WrestleMania card going forward. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's better than having the announcers just tell us what's on the card. I'd My rather I'd rather hear a rap. We may need to call him up because it may be time for a new theme song. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Oh boy, sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know if you know this one. Well versed in the lore, you would need to be well versed in the lore to come up with a rap for oh, us. Oh, we can give him some notes. Uh, <laughs> how do you think they came up with the Ghostbusters theme song? Yep. I mean, you know, oh my know gosh. Done. Anyways, uh, so my my answer was <laughs> my answer was Beth Phoenix and Edge. Well, but you know, Beth Phoenix for the mom. Part. But it, it was it, it, it it's it's. Yeah, they just seem like the most. Uh, the, the, I don't know. A documentary made them look, seem like a very nice couple. <laughs> uh, From and, everything and I've seen, they are a very, very happy little family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think my favorite part is just how much Edge adores his little girls, and mm. it's just so cute. And, and that always came off on the podcast too. So I mean, when like it, it felt like like, and I feel like you'll get more of the real story on a long form podcast kind of situation like that listen to this podcast uh <laughs> and uh you get an idea what's going on in my life sometimes uh but uh it, you know but it was confirmed by how you know what you saw in the edge documentary too well yeah i love the fact that the only person edge could train with was his wife oh. who could throw him around the ring so great. <laughs> that so was great. beautiful just absolutely beautiful yes. Beth phoenix is a badass and she God. Honestly, uh, I cried when she got inducted into the Hall of Fame for two reasons. One, I cried because, hey, childhood wrestling hero, finally getting the recognition she deserves. And then on a sadder note, I started crying when they shifted the focus from her to Edge. I was pissed about that. Mm. I really, and like, legitimately, I really do not like that some guy, I don't even remember who it was. I think it might have been Fink. Somebody walked out in the middle of, like, towards the end of her speech and she said, Ah, oh, yes, Beth, let's definitely think your husband, Edge. And they started playing Edge's theme and everybody did a standing ovation for him. And it's like, no, he got inducted years ago. Yeah, yeah. Beth is mm -hmm. getting inducted right now. It's her time. Like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was, I started crying. I was so upset. I was yeah. like, oh, no, I didn't, I didn't tune in to watch Edge get inducted. I tuned in because Beth Phoenix was getting inducted. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm still sore about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at least you know that probably wasn't Edge's call. So, I mean. I know, but like. It, it's unfortunate. <sighs> way. Well, anyways, of course, uh, this is because we're we're talking about. Wait, who's Canadian? Who's Canadian? Uh, uh, Beth, oh, is, Beth is not. The, Bonner, Bonner is saying that um, they seem super nice because they're Canadian. Uh, Beth is Canadian adjacent. <laughs> She's a Buffalo girl. So. Um, but does not. Oh, that, that's close enough. Sorry. That's close enough. That's, I mean, practically. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, same stuff. It's closer than some wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of wrestlers we know that was, that are not as close to being Canadians as that. So, oh, man, with the fire tonight. It's almost, uh, it's almost like I mean, if you people, tell people you're Canadian, you're like your your expected level of wrestling expertise increases by like twenty five percent. So if you just yeah, like, that's fair. Well, you're, you're next thing you're like, me, this guy must be good. Next thing yeah. you're gonna tell me is that Tracy Smothers wasn't a full blood Italian. What? <laughs> oh, um, I'm, I ain't saying anything. <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, we've all had our doubts about Tracy Smothers, but you have to admit, Tommy Rich definitely a full blooded Italian. I mean, there's no listen, doubt about that, right? Yes. Listen, yeah. I haven't done a blood test or anything, but <laughs> but but it came out marinara, so I think. <laughs> <we're>... <laughs> 
Oh, uh, uh, they're marinara or cannoli filling. So, oh. <laughs> wow, wow. I, Anyways, so Becky good. Lynch, big news this week, and I think the first time because I think somebody was else was like, is this the first time somebody had to uh, uh, relinquish a title due to pregnancy? Hmm. I, at least uh, in a major. I, mean, I was just trying to think about like when's the when have we. I'm glad Tatiana mentioned Mickey James because it's been so long since she kind of like stepped away to uh, to have uh, her have kids. Her that, or, does she have one or two? I, it doesn't matter. She has anyway, one. Uh, it, it's just like I was trying to think of like, okay, how when's the last time we had you know a woman wrestler who was this you know at the peak of like her career like step away for pregnancy? Um, and Mickey James is a great. Uh, and um, Mala at the peak of her hype had to step away. She didn't have a title. Yes, but. At the peak yeah. of her, at the height of her popularity, she had to step away. Mm-hmm. And we've also gotten much better reactions now than the reaction of Karma announcing her pregnancy. Yes. Yeah. That we, whole situation we, is just sad to look back on. Yeah. So. Like, it, it would have been one thing if they did it. Because honestly, what they did on Raw last night with revolving everything regarding Becky Lynch, I think was perfect. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because you got. 95% positive reactions from everyone involved. Mm-hmm. You got Seth Rollins looking like he just found out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you had the iconic <laughs> you had you had the iconics happy but dismissive. Mm-hmm. And then you had like Becky's last real opponent be a heel. Mm-hmm. And that was perfect because she didn't like mock Becky or anything like that. She's just like no one should get baby. No one should have babies. <laughs> She's like, wow, wow, you went to have a baby? Wow, I stayed here and stayed and stayed baby less. It, it would have been really funny if Shana was like, you know what? I was a baby. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I'm glad she didn't. I feel like that would have killed her heat. Yeah. yeah deadness it would because but let's honestly, be honest. The iconic should have said that. Oh no, they did say that. <gasps> they they did? did say that. They did. They they were both like, I was a baby. <laughs> you were a baby. Nikki acts like, and they said Nikki acts like a baby. That was the third joke. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I forgot they did say that. That's amazing. But they were like, the, yeah. They were the right people yeah. to say that. They, they were yeah. definitely the right people yeah. to say that. Considering right. how, how WWE reacted last time, one of their stars had to leave due to a pregnancy. This is a this is a one eighty complete mm-hmm. one well, perfect turnaround. Well, I mean, oh. There have been a couple of other pregnancies in between what happened with Karma. Mm -hmm. And I think, and here's the thing, every single pregnancy announcement, you're right, every single pregnancy announcement since what happened with Karma has been a lot more positive because of all the backlash they received about that. Like, Mm -hmm. wow, this woman just stepped out here and revealed she's starting a family, like she's crying tears of joy, and you have two of your biggest stars go out and body shame her in the process. That is a terrible way to treat one of your workers. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. every every announcement since then, especially because of how tragic that situation ended up being, yeah. has been a lot better because they learned their lesson. Like, oh, uh, that's a line we shouldn't be crossing. I'm mm. looking forward to eventually Becky Lynch turning heel by tossing a fake baby at Daniel Bryan to help Seth win a fight. <laughs> She pulls up. Oh no! Wait, Rebby Hardy did that. Do you remember? Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, so did uh, Maurice. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maurice. In fact, <laughs> honestly, Becky should do it to Miz. So Miz <gasps> for his own gimmick. Miz just sits up afterwards. It's just like, so that's how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Miz should absolutely pull a Christian bell from the Dark Knight Rises. So that's what that feels like. <laughs> oh my god, yes. Oh wow. Oh, uh, from from the chat room, a lot going on there. Uh one, I love this one line on the West Virginia Canadian border. Uh in reference to something <laughs> earlier. Uh, I wonder who that's talking about. I, I do. I, I do know who that's I have no about. idea who that's talking about. What's a, that, t- <laughs> tell me on the back channel. Uh, let's see. Tina's calling out Asuka, the only true women's Grand Slam champion. Um, we Ooh. need a different title for her. Do we? Yeah. Just because, give her one of the men's titles. Well, no, no. We need like a different over because here's Asuka's list. 
All right. Mm-hmm. Raw Women's Champion. Mm-hmm. SmackDown Women's Champion. Mm-hmm. NXT Women's Champion. Mm-hmm. Women's Tag Team Champion. Mm-hmm. Royal Rumble winner. Mm-hmm. Running in the Bank winner. Mm-hmm. Yes. He's the only one to do all of them. <gasps> You're right. Oh, well, actually, <laughs> wait. yeah. Yeah, she's the only one to do all of them. She went in the Elimination cool- Chamber at any point. Or at it, Helen's, <laughs> and she hasn't done in Hell in a Cell, I don't think. Wait, had she won the chamber? No, I don't no, think so. No, because they only had two women's chamber matches, and they right. were for the tag straps. Mm, well, at least in this era. The tag, the tag straps and uh, Shayna winning mm-hmm. that one match. But yeah, so that's the only thing Oscar really needs to be like the septuple slam champion but and this and this is a time because this is like this is the only time where one could do all those things considering like one of the, those things has only happened twice at this point right mm-hmm. and, well, even the women's money in the bank I, I keep forgetting it's only been around for what like four years yep yeah. uh, Carmella somehow won it twice <laughs> oh. they actually say Carmella is a two time money in the bank winner yep 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 mm-hmm I, it's not her fault they had to redo the match. So she won twice. I mean, yeah. it's legitimate. Technically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, but anyways, uh, let's see. Bobby Bobby of J-Town saying, I wanted Asuka to grab both briefcases, but I also wanted her to hold on to the case and cash in on Charlotte at Mania next year for whatever title she has. Yep. <laughs> I look at Bobby sorry, assuming Charlotte's going to have a title. <laughs> <laughs> because let's be um, honest. No, I'm... I Bobby, would... Bobby, if I were you, I'd be worried that Charlotte's showing up next Monday to take that belt from Oscar. So. Yeah, yeah, seriously. In yeah. Fear. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we had a homework assignment from last week. At first, Jacob's lessons. Uh, our friend, uh, Professor Jacob nope. Edwin. What? Nope, not, not friend. Not friend. Why not friend? Because I saw this match. Ah. Oh. So the, the the match in question was uh, one. Gold Dust, a returning Gold Dust, apparently, against Randy Orton. And this is uh, to get Cody Rhodes' job back, apparently. There was a lot of, uh, uh, it, it was it was an interesting setup because it was when um, um, Triple H was, of course, an authority figure. Go figure. Uh, it was during the <laughs> Really? I never would have guessed. Yes. Yeah, so shortly after the SummerSlam, uh, where Daniel Bryan won, only to be money in the bank and... Uh, Hunted by Orton. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It was a great time. Was this the lead-in? Was this a, a, a just months before the ill-fated Royal Rumble incident in Pittsburgh? Um, I'm not. You sure. know, is, is it? About, uh, let's yes, see what the date is. You're, yes, you're um, right. Yes, that was heading towards the Royal Rumble because oh, Daniel Bryan been- eventually got his shot. And at prevailed at WrestleMania, yeah. but Batista was the one who won the Rumble. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're in that fun time. So <laughs> let's call it the Buzzkill era. Yeah, it really like, was. They make you really want something and never give it to you. So. Yes. So so <laughs> there was a lot of fun stuff happening there. Uh, but we got this this Raw match with Goldust and and Randy Orton. I, I think we already know, man. Mike's take a little bit. We'll deep dive in there in a moment. Uh, uh, Tati, Matt, did you did you watch this? Yep. I did my homework. You yep. did your homework. I'll let Tati go first. <laughs> I okay. So the match itself is really good, and mm. the story that's being told is very. It's very compelling. Like it's really. It was good wrestling to watch Goldust like trying so hard to be the better man for his brother, for pretty much for his integrity as well. Because you know, when you're facing off against an authority figure that's holding this massive thing against you, above your head, mm-hmm. your integrity comes into play whether you want it to or not. So watching, it was good to watch like all the emotion that went into it, and of course, thinking yes, he's got it, he's got it, and no, he doesn't. Oh, oh no. Then, of course, you've got... Uh, I personally didn't think the promo afterwards by uh, by Randy Orton was all that great, considering what he typically does. Mm-hmm. I thought it was one of his... Well, not one of his better ones. But, you know, it served its purpose. You know, 
talk trash on Goldust, make him feel worse for failing his little brother, and then, of course, say to Daniel Bryan, hey, guess what? <laughs> You're a loser, too. But the worst part, and this is the part that sticks out the most, was the promo afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With Stephanie McMahon. And, you know, with heel authority figures, they are always, they're always the bastards. They always mm -hmm. take that one little step over the line. They always mm -hmm. toe the line just a little bit too hard. And even so, it's, it's still sucky to w sit there and watch as this guy who's poured his entire everything he could to save his little brother fail and then the authority figure goes oh are you are you disappointed you should be like it came across incredibly childish which mm -hmm. to a certain extent is the point you are supposed you were always supposed to see stephanie as like the childish one in the authority couple relationship it just still fell flat because it took away it would have been better if Goldust had not seen anybody or if he had been talking to an interviewer mm -hmm. and just not said anything. Like, Goldust, you you came up short tonight. What do you have to say? In my opinion, that would have been a better promo than mm -hmm. Stephanie, you know, rubbing salt in the wound and saying, oh, go join the unemployment line. But. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, uh, Matt, what, what about you? How, what was your take on it? Were we supposed to watch all the way to the end of the video? Because I, I st <laughs> when the match ended, I, w I was like, okay, we're good. I don't blame you for not wanting to watch any more Randy Orton. I don't I, blame I, Well, I mean, I saw the match. So, I mean, it's not like, and, and I saw Randy Orton cut his little one sentence promo on Goldust. Mm -hmm. And I, I left. I, I, I didn't think I had to hang around for anything else. See, um, Matt, Matt, it's like a Marvel movie. There's always a post credit scene. Always. <laughs> well, okay, so yeah. so we, uh, we, we next, linked. Next time I'll be more thorough. We linked the anyway. YouTube link, and, and it had nicely packaged in the promo with Goldust before the match and the promo afterwards for some reason. And mm. so, it, it, like, the full story was there. So it was kind of nice to, to get a little bit yeah. of context other than just having the match uh, for that. So. Um, it was interesting because, like, I did not know exactly what place in time we were when we saw this match. And I'm like, have Cody and Goldust won the tag titles yet? Have no. they, you know, where are we in this whole thing? And I, and so I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. I was like, does Cody get fired? Did Goldust win his job back? I don't understand. I don't know where we are. Um, so, so, so the, the, the ending, you know, was a complete shock to me and that probably enhanced the match for me a little bit mm -hmm. um I, I, as a match i mean it's it's perfectly perfectly acceptable wrestling uh <laughs> the only thing that really elevates it are um gold dust doing the crossroads mm -hmm. and toward the very end mm -hmm. and yeah. the stakes yeah the stakes make the match i mean this is like the you know the oldest lesson of you know pro wrestling right it doesn't matter. The fight doesn't matter. It's why they're fighting and what they're fighting for. So that takes, you know, two guys who are not going to do anything flashy mm -hmm. um, and are just going to like ground and pound, you know, the whole way. I mean, did they even like get to the second turn walk on anything? No, probably not. Mm -hmm. um, and they just kind of, it's, it's, you know, a punch kick, you know, you know, it's Randy Orton. So you get a chin lock here and there and uh, you know, it's just a match, but because of the stakes, uh, and because they were fortunate to be in Canada, uh, the yeah. crowd's really hot. The Toronto and it's, crowd. It's got a lot of energy. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was a fun match to watch. Um, I also wanted to point out, it had one of my favorite little subtle wrestling things that always kind of make me smile whenever I see it. It's like they get on the outside and like Goldust does something to to knock Randy for a loop. And Randy kind of like turns away from Goldust and just swings at the air. And then falls over. <laughs> it's fantastic stuff. Um, um, that was a good little thing. I had some notes here. Uh, again, I, I let's see. What did I write down here? Um, I miss crowds. Check. <laughs> Check. Okay. It was almost okay. surreal to watch a wrestling match with a crowd and the, with a WWE Raw era crowd again uh, for me, and such a hot one with them. Uh, because you you look at it, you know you know like Mike was saying you know on papers it's like it's an Orton match grown right, um, but it's just like but people are. You forget how much people eat that up. People were in this match, and uh, in, in person, or they're drunk. Who knows? Ah, they're Canadian. That's that's, that's the thing. Um, drunk Canadian 
and into the match in that order. That's right. That's, um, that's a good recipe. Uh, I, I'd argue not everyone was into the match. <laughs> Enough people. Enough no, people. Like, the people that were face front on the hard cam side were dancing. I, <laughs> I'm going by how they I mean, sound. Great. They were dancing during a Randy Orton headlock. Mm -hmm. So that's roughly about eight minutes of a match. But <laughs> like, because again, this is this is Randy. Like this is Randy's style. Mm -hmm. I get it. It's supposed to be slow and plodding, but God damn, is it boring? Um, the story they're telling is very good. I appreciate the story. The false finishes were great. Mm -hmm. uh, but what left a sour taste in my mouth was realized was watching this right after being told on Raw that Edge versus Randy Orton could be the greatest wrestling match ever. And I'm looking at a match <laughs> with, with him and Dustin Rhodes from almost a decade before this. And I'm like, oh, honey, no. <laughs> Good response. Good response. Yeah. And, 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 the, and to echo what Tatiana said, the Stephanie thing, Stephanie is an authority figure for men. Mm -hmm always bothered me not for the reasons you'd think but because she would try to channel vince so much mm -hmm. the and she does a good job at that but the reason that vince worked was because people would get comeuppance on vince mm -hmm. like he'd get a stunner every second or third week yeah whereas every single time stephanie berated someone they just had to sit and take it. Mm -hmm. And there was never any or, kind of retribution for it. Yeah. Or like when she'll hit a superstar and it's like, great, who's supposed to hit you back? Yeah. Because yeah. exactly. unfortunately, the WWE is not pro intergender wrestling. Yeah. It's still a you don't hit, women don't hit, get hit them in zone. Except for it's dad. Like, great. Yeah. Except for dad, apparently. And, and you like think about like the era that they're in. Mm -hmm. This is like, yeah, I mean, like I kind of jokingly referred it to it as like the buzzkill era, but think of like the sequence of events. Mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan just got turned on and screwed out of the world title. Cody Rhodes got fired. Goldust comes back, fails. I mean, there's going to be a sequence of Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan matches on pay per view that will end in one failure after another for daniel bryan to the point where towards the end of the year or the crowd turns on the product yeah and yeah. elevates daniel bryan yeah. that's that's the end game and that's the path wwe has set itself on at this at that point in history it will also they are end, turning the crowd against their company at this point it will end on daniel bryan's trainer and mentor sean michaels turning on him for no fucking reason and no fucking payoff yeah i'm yeah. still waiting for that wrestlemania match which honestly they could do because we've seen Sean can go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Sean was not the problem in that match. No, no, no. There, no. Were, there were three <laughs> other problems. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not talking about the time zone change. Um, nope. <laughs> it wasn't jet lag. Uh, so with that, well, okay, that was great. So that was our first. That was our first lesson. Our first homework mm -hmm. assignment from one Jacob Sword. Edwin. Sword. Um, if this next assignment is Randy Orton, I am copying someone's notes. Oh, well, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. I don't get the. I don't get a cheat sheet on this. I don't get the syllabus. Uh, I find out when you guys do. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at what the next uh, edition, or the next homework assignment from Jacob Edwin is. Hello, Wrestling Mayhem Show. My name is Professor Jacob Edwin, and I have another assignment for you. We're going to go back almost 30 years to Clash of Champions. Now, some of you might be uh, really reluctant to do this, but trust me, because you're going to see a glimpse of the future in 1993, June 17th, Clash of Champions, the WCW Tag Team Championships are on the line in a two out of three falls match with the Hollywood Blondes defending their championship against Ric Flair and Arn Anderson. I love this match because it's a great cross-section between the 1980s and the 1990s. Stone Cold Steve Austin would go on to be one of the biggest and best superstars and wrestlers in 
all of wrestling history. Brian Pillman would go on to have a very successful career. Arn Anderson and Ric Flair, uh, some thought maybe their best years were behind them, but I think Ric Flair went on to prove that absolutely wrong, and Arn Anderson did his best and probably would have gone on a lot more were it not for injuries uh, ending his career prematurely. Uh, so you get to see this great cross-section, and hopefully you guys are all sharp enough and bright enough to appreciate it. Uh, but chances are slim. Thank you, and I'll talk to you all next week. Well, there you go. The latest. So I, I'm actually excited for that one. Okay, that, I, I, want, I want Professor Edwin to come back and berate Mad Mike for not appreciating Randy Orton. We might have to That's work something. We might have to do. work something out for that. We, we, we don't know if he's grading on, us on these yet or anything like that. You know, now that we've uh, sort of given our uh, dissertations, if you will. Uh, well, he just gave that? me whiplash because he, he said the words, we're going to go back almost 30 years. And I went, oh, that's a while. And he said 1993. I was born in 1996. <laughs> oh, God damn it. And I went, oh, my God. Oh, God. All right. All right. Tatiana is ready for yeah. some fetus time wrestling. <laughs> I'm so I'm very... like, oh. I'm so man. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, there you go. That is our homework assignment well, I, for this next God, week. Yeah. What's that? Oh my God. This is fun. I love this segment. <laughs> and, uh, th- this is this is great. It's another match. I don't know the outcome, so this is this is cool. I'm I'm enjoying this. It's a dark pretty- it's it's a dark zone for me because again, you know that whole early ni- like pre 1996 WCW is still like I don't know it. I really yeah, don't know I, it. I didn't and have the superstation. I back mean, then, to, so. to, yeah, I didn't have the cable. Didn't have the superstation. Like it's it's not it's not part of me. So like this is new, and it's something to really focus on. Um, I mean, if it makes you guys feel better, neither did I. <laughs> that's you with, I mean, but that's also you with life. Okay, like like we need to have a sit down about Nirvana, okay, or something because I think it's sort of the same era. Well, I right. know what Nirvana is. <laughs> oh my god! I was a hipster for about five yeah. minutes. They, or they did Ravens music, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh, oh <laughs> come right. on, give me give me a little bit more credit. I was I, a hipster I'm for just, like five minutes. I'm <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, but you thought it's a hipster? I was, <laughs> oh. That was a 90s flannel wearer. Uh, <laughs> Sorg, Sorg, it's okay. We're all just the oldest people. Tat- Tatiana, we were yep. all wearing flannel, and there was nothing ironic about it. No, it was no. serious no. stuff back then. We, no, we didn't have right. we didn't have to be pretend hipster Canadians with the tag well, championships. Um, I, I I wasn't wearing flannel because I was in Catholic school, so I wasn't allowed to wear. <laughs> anything you have an life. excuse. You have an excuse. Yeah, I, I, have an excuse. Listen, guys, I wasn't listen. allowed to wear anything. Listen, I I totally I totally understand where you guys are coming from about seriously wearing flannel. I am a technical theater theater person, and flannel is is the religion there. So mm-hmm. I have but, my share of. Fl- by the way, Tatiana, if if you want to do a deep dive onto wrestling outfits, um, just look back the takeover attire of Johnny Gargano, because mm. you know exactly what's going to happen in all of his matches just by looking at who he's cosplaying as. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Isn't it's, it it's beautiful? It's, it's so and cool. I it, it love us, costume theory. It took us so long to realize it too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Way I too remember fucking long to realize it. Um, some well, fun fact going off of that real fast. Uh, Finn Balor, you, I knew when his last NXT thing was going to be because somebody mentioned that his last uh, New Japan t- show that he did the Demon at, he did nothing but black and white paint. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when he showed up in black and white paint in the in- his last NXT appearance, everybody went, ah. <laughs> It's, like He's the credits, right? it's the credits of a movie because it's only in black and white. Yeah, and then he accidentally made a sequel. And <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes when you get dragged out, they drag you back in. It's wow. luckily it's one of those things where the sequel is better than the original. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Just wait until Walter can now. travel. <laughs> uh, Just wait until Walter can travel. Oh, I want to see that Finn Balor Walter match so mm-hmm, bad. I can't mm-hmm. Guys, it is that time of the show where we find out what you learned in wrestling this week, other than our homework assignment, I suppose. That can be a part of it. What'd you guys learn? 
Oh, I learned that uh, Titan Towers has a secondary roof. <laughs> yep. Yes. Uh, and apparently it's uh, well padded. So <laughs> it's, only, it's only six feet apart. Right. I mean, hey, a, a fall from six feet high, what's the worst that could happen? You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. I learned that it's not the best idea to talk about your ancestry if it doesn't have a wrestler in it. <laughs> uh huh. Grace O'Malley was awesome, but uh, I'm going to try to stay away from those waters. <laughs> she did it. She said it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. I see what you did there. Oh, my God. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I'm muting hey, him. Hey. I'm muting him. <laughs> we're, we're, we have to have one last thing for the hook, you know? Anyway. Uh, um, we should probably paddle out of this conversation. Bad Mike, what'd you learn? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, all right. So don't make me walk the plank here. Let me just tell you what I learned. Son of a bitch! <laughs> I made him move the camera. <laughs> Just see that now? The camera just right that? There. I just hit the table so hard it moved his camera. <laughs> I, the, the, you guys don't myself. see that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pleased with myself. Um, I learned the thing I miss most about the Iconics. The thing I miss the most about the Iconics was not their promos, was not their wrestling, was not their facial expression. It was their WWE exclusive videos after their matches. Oh. <laughs> and they have another now that they're back. And it, it, it's just a treasure because they are just so delightfully weird. Mm-hmm. And I love them. <laughs> like, they're just very Australian. And hearing the, the New Day podcast makes me get it even more. And I love <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I can't wait for how salty their promos are gonna get. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh god. Mm-hmm. I, I I like legit to this day being in the arena when they won the tag titles was one of my favorite moments. I I legit cried. You know, I wasn't allowed to be happy about them winning the titles because I was in a room with uh three people that did not like the iconics. Mm-hmm. There were four. There were four of us, and everybody chose a team. And I okay. said, "You know what? Uh, it's not just because they're the last ones, but I love the Iconics. I choose them to win." And everybody was like, "Ha! That's not going to happen." And then they won, mm-hmm. and everybody looked at me, and I was like, "And they went shut up." And I went, and and then you just said, "You gotta be joking me!" Well, there was also there was also a very. Uh, anxious dog in the room and oh. we were none of us were allowed to get loud because we would spook the dog that's fair the dog dog now i just realized Kayla. <laughs> mad mike witnessed the iconics winning the tag titles sorg i personally witnessed them losing the tag titles were you what? there what uh what the, the yes i was they lost those titles in pittsburgh Mosh we went billy k freaking out on the uh, ringside area it was, after they lost and they spent the entire commercial break just throwing a fit on the floor mm-hmm. it was great. i mean that's amazing so so happy they ended up using the, the remixes to YouTube. that are still some of the best things oh yeah mm-hmm. oh yeah the, i mean it's it's i mean uh, the iconics if nothing else happens with the iconics uh for whatever reason uh it, it, it they have they have made their mark as the most delightful mm-hmm. thing on no, wrestling. no. The best thing is, in like a year and a half, when they turn face, they are going to be the hottest thing in the company. Yeah, because it's happening eventually. It's the new day arc, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It, that, mm, sword. That's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. It's the new. Mm-hmm. It's the new day arc. It's the Edge and Christian arc. It's exactly what it is. It's gonna happen at some point, and I am here for it. Yes, same here. Um, the other thing we talked about this a little bit last night on the wrap up as well. Uh, but I, uh, I learned, uh, I, I love a good arc coming together. I, when, when whoever it was pointed out on this show about the, uh, everybody that fights Bray Wyatt and what happens to them afterwards, I feel like that was a, a Matt, a, a point out, maybe somebody else that was on the show. Uh, and you watch what happens to them, you know, Daniel Bryan, you know, people go, you know, off and Seth was one of those. 
But watching the thread of Seth, you know, maybe hasn't been the greatest uh, along that journey. But like looking at everything last night, you know, watching the rise, the turn to Messiah, right, uh, to the match that we got last week, to the distraught plus you're a father, you know, sure. handshake <laughs> from that's Drew. That's when Messiah re- realized he could create life. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you know what he should take that and run with it it's mm-hmm. like he should it's proven everybody i bring life to wrestling yes yeah everybody goes i have created new life in this world i am your god at some point <laughs> wow at some point there's gonna be a this Seth- Miz walks up from behind and says yeah you're not that special yeah, yeah. you need like a like, real dad to go up to him and be like Dude, it may seem like you're the man right now, but you are not the man. <laughs> no, yeah. not you're not the, the man, man until you can. He's not the man in his own relationship. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I mean, for me, this whole Seth arc it doesn't end until he is like reimagining the Alberto Del Rio entrance. Except instead of a very expensive car, he is rolling in in a minivan <laughs> with like screaming kid in the back seat. That yeah. needs to happen. I, I feel like Miz was. Oh, I feel like Miz God. was almost there. Yeah, By the way, almost um, there. guys, guys, and and obviously we don't know this yet. If Becky ends up having twins, they have to be named <sighs> Dean and Roman, right? <laughs> <laughs> Like regardless, like regardless of the gender, no, no, we're all be because that we're, they can't be because there's no guarantee that Seth won't repeat history on his own ch- children. That's my point. I don't know what the names are <laughs> going to be. My point. That's my exact point. But if he has <laughs> twins, the initials have to be J and J. That is what needs to oh. happen. So, oh. Matt, 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 I got it. I'm here, no, Matt. I'm with you. J and J, their names, John and Joe. Oh, <gasps> we did it, everyone. Oh. We did it. We so did that to together. Just DM it straight to Becky because Seth is not allowed near social media anymore. No, no, he so, isn't. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. The man who makes all the decisions. Wait we all did this together, everyone. Did, wait a minute. Did Seth Rollins pull a noir? To get to be not allowed to your social media is that what happened? Like um, <laughs> maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part, but yeah. yeah. I mean, did he get that bad? Is he I, getting I, that I, bad? Wait, what was his ban? Was it when he was he was poking at like indie wrestlers or something, or or uh, did he show his dick he, again? Uh, he, he, I, he, I I don't want to talk. I, I'm sure he means well, and <laughs> you know what? He, he's having a kid. Please don't be too hard on him. Yeah, that's even true. I'm starting to feel sorry for Seth. So. <laughs> From the chat room, um, <laughs> I, I think Tina learned that AJ needs a spotter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't, you probably didn't see that on the first, right? AJ also channeled Kylo Ren by going Ray. Yeah, Ray! yeah. Uh, Baron will have seven years of bad luck. Yeah, there was that. Also, I love that because to me that was kind of reenacting a uh, no holds barred moment there. Uh, <laughs> it's the movie. Uh, also, also, I still believe that Vince was writing the script for No Holds Barred Two on that piece of paper in the office. Okay. okay. Nobody, nobody uh, with me on that. Sorg, sorg, sorg. Who stars? Who stars in No Holds Barred Two? Yep. Two. Cena. No. Dwayne. No. 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 Cena's no. no. uh, too big now. He's done a Transformer movie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know what happened behind the scenes. I, I, I oof, very intimate with Bumblebee. Um, Ooh. Bobby learned that Asuka is the goat. Charlotte is on every P- WWE show. There was a, something in here earlier about even to, 205 Live. Uh, she, that really she, happened. She, she, oh yeah, she even went back in time and appeared on Shotgun Saturday Night. Rey Mysterio isn't supposed to get stars in his eyes. And hey, Kayla, the Iconics are back. Yeah. <laughs> Potter learn if you are people who don't like the iconics, you need to leave. That's true. <laughs> or it's that way. Or that yeah, way. Uh, Maybe that's entirely that factual. Uh, do, 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 do. And uh do, 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 do. oh Tina says he was finishing the booking for that very match. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> what I, I I'm and, sure uh, he was just like, oh shit, we're almost done. Uh who's the fat one? 
Uh, I, I, I feel like I feel like there's some joke about like the Booker pencil situation there too. So since it was like a pad of paper, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently the chairs being pushed in was was an inside gag because apparently that is expected and an, a mm-hmm. known expected thing with Vince when you're in his office is to push the chairs yeah. back into their place. And I'm sure it'll be on the next Dark Order segment. <laughs> oh my god! Inevitably, Tatiana Rose, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Where can people find out more about Tatiana? I have an Instagram at the Tatiana Rose. I have a Twitter, Tatiana underscore 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 Rose. And I'm on Facebook. I have a regular page as well as a page you can go and like, both under Tatiana Rose. Go and find me on all those things. Catch up with uh, the pro- their, her quarantine promos and watch the slow descent into madness. <laughs> It only hair. took a pause for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> or did it? <laughs> okay, wait, wait, this isn't the madness? <laughs> Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter. Um yeah, you can find me there. I- I'm on Twitter. Uh also g- go to TUBI.tv, look for Lucha Underground and get some goddamn Dario Cueto in your life. And Matt Carlins. Thank you very much, Sorg. Don't forget to check out the Listen to Your Parents podcast. And uh, we'll see. Maybe someday Becky and Seth will be on. Who knows? One day. One day. <laughs> <laughs> Working on that. Work on that. Make the call. Make the call. Anyways. <laughs> hey, Kayla. <laughs> hey, Kayla. Make the call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody in the chat room all night long hanging out with us uh, across the watch parties, the the chat rooms, the uh, Periscopes, the Twitches, the Twitters the YouTubes. Uh, thank you so much. We will be see you again. Uh, we have a lot of streaming. Your Jag Off is streaming at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, musician and comedy to be announced. I haven't seen that yet. I think it was, it was supposed to be a big surprise I was told last week. Ooh. They don't tell me these things. I just have to show up and make sure everybody sounds okay. Uh, Mystery partner. <laughs> Mystery <laughs> partner. Oh, God. Mm. <laughs> Damn it, we should have had you doing that this whole time. It was like it's like week eight and we haven't done that yet. Um Fight Underground, the uh Fight Council, Honorable Fight Council meeting will be uh tomorrow night uh at 10 p.m. on the Fight Underground page. Uh that got very controversial last week, so we'll see what happens this week. Uh so uh <laughs> Tatiana, Tatiana has some thoughts on that. What's the worst that could happen, Sorg? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's for another show and or promo probably so <laughs> that's the most awkward chat room moment i ever had uh, and also we will probably be back um i'm looking at 7 30 probably thursday with the quarantine hangout who's going to be on who knows who's going to show up I, I i i well i'll book it tomorrow um and of course listen to your parents as mentioned and we are going to have an rwa uh results for brackets at c and d for the rwa 64 person tournament uh interactive tournament over there and saturday night will be the prospect pro wrestling watch along uh to replace the originally scheduled live show that was supposed to happen pre-quarantine uh so lots of stuff happening tune in every night of the week for as long as we can do it uh we'll see you guys next time mayhem out